Round two. Fight. This time against N Wood. Oh four. Look at our hand. We are like perfectly set up to go in the late game, so hopefully they don't have a uh very, very, very aggressive start, but we do have Touch of the Void to kill something, so uh, they are mulliganing to five, which is not the best. Look, look, keep the hand. And they put the card on top. And we're on the draw, so already we're, we're basically up three cards, which feels great. We get to play a two drop. Start the, start the beat downs. Figure... They could have, like, Gideon's Approach, right, or something, but I'm just going to play Feldar Cub this turn anyway, rather than Seer's Lantern, so I might as well play my Tap Land. Gets in an extra point of damage, even though the Vigilance doesn't really matter. 2-2. Two, two. Let's them ramp. That's a pretty good one. Uh, here's an interesting play choice. Definitely play my land. Maybe not. I guess I just attack. I'm kind of worried at playing against white that they could have isolation zone or journey to nowhere. So I don't know what they value more. Attack with both, assuming that he'll trade with the cub if he has a isolation zone or journey. If he doesn't, then he probably doesn't. So that trades, that's fine with me. So here we can go, I think, Lantern into Prism. Yep. Nice, okay. Battle Herder was a good draw. Piranha Marsh is not really a playable card. Let's just play a Swamp over it. Okay, that's something that we can kill. Um, but I think I'd rather just attack, see if he trades. He probably shouldn't since he didn't trade before, but he does. That's interesting to me, because the War Cleric is really good. That is play 3-3. Three, three. So they have 7 mana and nothing... I'm not playing anything, so I guess I'm just going to beat for 3 and play a... Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like trying to say, I'm playing a Scythe Master here, right? Yeah. So they have Ulamog's Crusher. Really, really, really good 8 drop here. The problem is I have 5 mana uh, Vindicate here. So that lets me get in for 6 and I've got lethal in play and if they didn't have any plays before playing the Crusher they're going to probably be too far behind. Corpse Churn lets them get back the Battle Herda. And they just play a 2-2. Two -two. That's kind of weird. They could have played Battle Herda. So, in the effort of sh revealing the least amount of information, I just attack with both my guys. They do have a Gideon's Approach, right? So that's good. I wanted to learn about that. And they do not block, so that lets me just touch of void them to kill them. Touch of the void is finishing off a lot of games here. All right, game two. Um, I guess I'll keep this. Hope to hit some gas, maybe. Not the best hand. Island was not the worst draw step. Glory Seeker, okay. Alright, Seer's Lantern's, again, not the absolute worst. Definitely trade here since I. No? Huh. That's interesting to me. Thought I should trade there since I know I'm going to be on the back foot. But I guess I just wanted more information. And now I know I can't attack because it would just die to the quicksand. Intimidate, that's going to prove to be a big beater. Yeah, Shieldmate's Blessing, yeah. 
Uh, should have traded early. I'm going to take a lot of damage now. Ugh. Sandstone bridge. Get to bash for three, but my guy can't even block, which is kind of annoying. Play the Seer's Lancer basically just so I can scry on upkeep and hold open deprive. Just because I can't afford to draw another land. I really can't. Ooh, and they have a five drop, four drop, five drop. Ugh. Well, I can't. Here's the problem Deprive now doesn't do anything for me. I actually have to top deck like a removal spell. Oh. Looks like I made the right play and did not scry. So that allows me to kill the big 4-5 and hit for 2. So we're going to take another 4. They hit land. Take 4. They did nothing though. Alright, so now I think I can scry. Because a land means I'm assuredly dead. And this allows me to hit. I could hit a 4 drop. And I'd be fine. Heat Ray, unfortunately, has to go to the bottom since I can't cast it. And Royal Mage's Trick, okay. That is a 4-drop that's going to draw me a card and gain me 4 life. It's basically, uh, basically Ojitai's command. So I'm going to turn these creatures into 0 power guys and draw a card. Draw Battle Hurt, a perfect draw step since that hopefully will be able to stem the bleeding from these 2-2 two, two, and 2-1 two, guys. All right, so they have an ally. Touch of the Void, not not the best. And I don't scry on upkeep because I need to be able to play this large five mana card. But I can play it and hold the Prive open. Meanwhile, Welkin turn is just doing all sorts of work in the air. Ooh, they do they do keep hitting lands, which is a little scary because they can hit for two. Intimidate, but we're holding. We just held off four, which is pretty good. And they just say go, so I have a choice. I can scry here or leave open deprive in case they have instant speed removal, like scour from existence or something. But I figure I really need to scry. I'm behind right now. I can't really win unless something changes in my benefit. Island easily goes to bottom. Upkeep. Definitely scry again. And negate. Uh, we need an answer for this intimidate guy. I don't think negate is good in this spot since we already have deprived. So I definitely put negate to bottom. And courier griffin. That's a pretty good draw. Now this is a really interesting decision point though. We definitely attack for two. Second main phase here, though, you know, let's pull the audience. What what do you do? Do you play Courier Griffin and put the shields down on Deprive for a turn? They've been hitting all their land drops, and they have seven land, and you know they have Ulamog's Crusher in their deck. If we play Courier Griffin and they land Ulamog's Crusher, we probably can't win unless we hit the Exile spell. Oh, wait, we've already cast it. So now we're just racing. And we would have four points of power in the air. We'd hit them for four down to five, and then four down to one. And they would be exiling our lands. We would be taking, we'd have to chomp. Yeah. Uh, I guess if we have a chance to hit red, we could hit one in two attacks. I figure I can go shields down for one turn. I figure even if they have Ulamas Crusher, they may not, not have the land in hand, so... I think I just play the Courier Griffin. Gain some life. So I do go up to 8. Okay, they hit land. Let's see. Do they have it? No, they do not. Upkeep. Scry. And yeah. Sorok Banisher, I think, is a very good draw step here. Because we can play it bounce his intimidate guy 
and have a second creature to hold back the fort. And if, now they're just dead on board if... Well, I guess they're not dead on board since we don't have red mana if they play Little Logs Crusher. Dread Drone into the 2-1. So now we just need a red source and they're dead. And holdout settlement is enough. So we attack them down to 1. Play the holdout. Settlement and touch of the void them. Touch of the void them has ended three games now. Pretty sweet one. Okay, stay tuned for round three.